This was me. I tipped the scales at 415 pounds. Then, while planning a vacation to Universal Studios for my family, I realized that I was not going to fit on the rides. Worried that my size and limitations would ruin my family's vacation, I decided to start making some changes. This is me now. I'm still a big guy, but I've lost 94 pounds. And I'm still working on it. But while on my weight loss journey, I have rediscovered my childhood love of theme parks. I've also discovered that there are many others, like me, that would like to enjoy the parks, but share the same concerns about fitting onto the rides that I do. Well, I have done the hard work for you. I have risked embarrassment and the dreaded walk of shame to fat guy test every single ride in the park, so you'll know exactly which ride you can and can't fit on. This is the Magic Kingdom. The happiest place on Earth, right? Well, it can be. But what if you're of the plus size persuasion like me? Lucky for you, Disney is very plus size friendly. Here we have the entrance to the Magic Kingdom. As you come in, the first thing you're going to come across is the Walt Disney World Railroad. The Walt Disney World Railroad is just your standard theme park train as far as seating is concerned. As you see here, it's just a bench seat, so as long as you can step up into the vehicle, it shouldn't be that much of an issue, no matter your size, no matter your weight. So there is not really going to be a weight restriction on the Walt Disney World Railroad. As you come up from the railroad, you're going to go through Main Street USA. Now for this video, we're going to go counterclockwise around the park. So as you get up toward the Founder statue and the hub, we're going to take a right and go into Tomorrowland. Now for this video, I'm going to focus on rides. So we're going to pass up Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor here because that is just a show. And right now, Stitch's Great Escape is only operating seasonally. I believe Stitch's Great Escape is on its way out, so we're going to skip by that one again as well. So, with that being said, the first ride we're actually going to come across is Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin. Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin is an indoor carnival theme type buggy dark ride. And as you can see from the seating right here, it is a bench seat and that green bar, as you'll see that has the guns on it, will actually pull toward you and whoever you're sitting with, if you're sitting with someone, and lock into place. I was able to ride this ride. Now this is me at a little bit over 400 pounds and it's a little bit up against my gut there, but I don't remember having any kind of issues whatsoever with this. Uh, you're going to be, I think, easily safe at 425, maybe up to 450 depending on your actual body dimensions. As we leave the Space Ranger spin, we're going to come over to the right just a little bit, and we're going to go into Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. Now I know some people think Carousel of Progress is a show, but it moves, so for safety purposes here, we're going to call it a rod in this video. Carousel of Progress is a kind of a theater style moving dark rod show combo. It's a little kind of its own thing. You sit in like a theater style seat, which you'll see here, and you slowly rotate around a room full of scenes of animatronics kind of showing you visions of the past, future, or what Walt Disney thought the future might be. The seats are a little, were a little bit snug on me uh, at a little over 400 pounds when I actually rode this. So I'm gonna say up to 425, you probably can fit in these seats. But as you can see from this picture, they do have a handicap accessible area that the arm can lift up. So you can probably go a little bit bigger than that if you're willing to sit in this seat. But those seats are few and far between. So if you plan on riding this and sitting in that seat, get there early. As you come away from the carousel of progress, you're gonna come to the entrance to Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover and the Astro Orbiter. The People Mover is one of my personal favorites. I don't know why, I just like it. It's like the lazy person's roller coaster. Um, but as you can see from the picture here, it's just a bench seat. There are no other restraints, so there aren't really any weight restrictions as long as you think you can fit in that seat. At just a hair over 400 pounds, had no issues whatsoever. Plenty of room, so as long as you think you can manage that moving walkway that gets you on and off the, the ride vehicle, you're going to be fine at just about any weight. The Astro Orbiter. This one actually gave me a little bit of trouble. Uh, as you can see here, it is just a large kind of tubular uh, rocket ship cart that you get into. And there is one seat belt, but it has to go around both people if you have two people in the cart with you. I sat in there with my daughter 
and it was a struggle to get it around both of us. It just fit, and the sides were actually a little bit snug on me. And again, I was able to ride this at just a little bit over 400 pounds, so depending on your body dimensions, I'm going to say up to 425 if you can get in and out of this thing. Uh, but once you sit down, you actually have to stretch your legs out and push them forward, and it's kind of a high step getting over the lip of this thing into the cart, so it's a bit tough in that respect. But if you can handle it, like I said, I think up to 425, you're not going to have an issue. Maybe a little bit more depending on your actual body dimensions. As you go right from the Astro Orbiter, you're going to approach my personal favorite, Space Mountain. Space Mountain is a little bit of a unique fit. You do have to sit in an individual seat so there's no riding side by side. And as you can see, the seats are pretty wide. And they were pretty roomy. For me, at just over 400 pounds when I rode this, I had no issues with the seat whatsoever. Now the lap bar itself only come down about two or three clicks, so it was pretty tight in that respect. So any bigger than that, I'd say 425 is probably going to be your cap on this depending on your body dimensions. And just remember though that once you get in this thing, you're going to have to be able to extend your legs out forward, which may cause a little bit of trouble getting in and out of this thing, so keep that in mind. And just so you know that I'm not lying to you, here's a picture of me on it just at over 400. As you walk away from Space Mountain, you're going to come right and approach the entrance to Tomorrowland Speedway. The Tomorrowland Speedway also gave me a little bit of trouble. Uh, again, it's one of those, you're going to have to be able to get inside and out of the vehicle, so there is a little bit of a step up there, so know your limits on that. And there is just one seat belt for everybody in the seat. And it only takes two people, and I was in there with my daughter. So it had to get the seatbelt around both of us, and I was able to manage it, again, at just over 400 pounds. And there was maybe an inch or two to spare, so keep that in mind. But the issue I had is, if you see from this picture here, the floorboard kind of triangles inward. So being able to push my knees over to the side and crunch up was the biggest issue. So if you're wide in the thigh or have trouble pulling your knees together and riding that way, that might be the issue for you. But other than that, if you want to ride by yourself, Again, you can probably get into this maybe up to 425 pounds depending on your body dimensions. After you leave Tomorrowland Speedway, you're going to continue up and you're going to run into the Mad Tea Party or the Teacup Ride. The Mad Tea Party is another one that gave me a little bit of an issue. There are no restraints in this. The problem is getting into this little side hole here and then scooting yourself around the edge of the seat and then closing the little bitty door. Now, it's just all kinds of little bitty issues here. If you're long in the leg and big, it's probably not going to work for you. Um, I was in there, again, at just over 400, and it was crunching my gut. It was the little wheel thing was pushing into me. It was a little uncomfortable. And I was riding with my wife and my two kids, so we were kind of crunched in there, and our legs were crisscrossed and bent over, and it was very awkward getting in and out. But I was able to do it. But I'm probably going to be at about the max for that, so just right around 400 give or take depending on your body style. Now it would be a little bit easier if you're riding by yourself in the teacups or with just one other person, but keep all that in mind if you're riding with a party of, you know, two or more. As you leave the teacups, you got one of two choices. You can go left, but for this video, we're gonna go counterclockwise and continue right into the Storybook Circus area. In Storybook Circus, the first thing you're gonna see on your right is Dumbo the Flying Elephant. Everybody knows the classic Dumbo ride, right? It's just a big elephant car. So you get into this thing and as you can see, it is just a bench seat again, but there is going to be a seat belt restraint. And it's just one seat belt for whoever's in the car with you. So it's either you or you and some other person. And I recommend if you're a little bit of a larger person like me, you sit with a smaller person. Because two big people are not going to really fit all that comfortably in here. Depends on how big they are. Um, my daughter and I rode this, I believe, the first time I rode it. And then again, it was me and my son when I was a little bit smaller. And we didn't have that much of an issue either time. I was a little over 400 pounds, the largest I rode this. We had a couple extra inches to spare on the seat belt. So I'm going to say probably up to 425 again, you're going to be safe on this. Now as you leave Dumbo the Flying Elephant, you're going to continue up and you will run into the goofy themed kitty coaster, the Barnstormer. It's not really kitty, but it's on that borderline. My family and I, we all really love this ride. It's a little bit short, but it's still a lot of fun. So if you're in the area and it's a short wait, don't skip the Barnstormer. Now, as you can see from these pictures here, it is again a bench seat. 
and you can get in there as a big person with another smaller person like I did with my son on one occasion and my daughter on another. And again, the biggest I rode this was just a little bit over 400 pounds. Now, the only restraint that you have is going to be that one lap bar that you see right here. It's going to pull down and you're going to have to be able to turn your knees to get it inside the bar. So if you have trouble getting your knees together or kind of tilting them toward the center of the cart while you're in the cart with someone else, that's going to be your biggest issue. But again, trend we're running here, on up to probably about 425, you're going to be safe. And just next to the Barnstormer, you're going to see one of the other two entrances to the Walt Disney World Railroad. Now, as you walk away from the Barnstormer and the Railroad, going back through the entrance to Storybook Circus, we are going to go upward and over here to Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid. Under the Sea, the Journey of the Little Mermaid is going to be another bench seat, single bar, indoor dark ride. As you can see from the picture here, you're going to get into one of these bad boys, these little shell carts. And like I said, it is a bench seat and you have this one black bar. It's going to come down for whoever is in the cart, whether that be you or you and someone else. So keep that in mind if you have small children that the bar is only going to come down as far as it's going to allow for the biggest person in the cart. Now it is a pretty gentle ride. You're not going to fall out of this thing unless you want to, even if the bar doesn't come down all the way to like your lap or to your waist, because if you're a smaller person next to somebody bigger, it's not going to be that big of an issue, but just be aware that that's going to be the case. So with this, being that it's just the one black bar, there's not going to be a whole lot of weight restriction on this. If you want to ride by yourself, you can probably be a pretty good size and be able to fit in this thing. So probably as long as you can step up into this cart and you think you're going to fit on that bench seat there, the lap bar is going to be able to come down a little bit and you're going to be just fine. The Journey of the Little Mermaid is the only ride up here on the north side of Fantasyland. So we're going to continue around going past Gaston's Tavern, past the Be Our Guest Restaurant. We will pass the Enchanted Tales with Belle attraction. Uh, come over here, left past the Castle Turrets, and we will approach the entrance to Seven Dwarves Mine Train. Seven Dwarves Mine Train is one of the newer attractions in Magic Kingdom, and it is a minecart themed roller coaster to obviously the Seven Dwarves. Now, this one is going to give a few people a little bit of trouble, and I'll tell you why. I was able to ride this thing at just a little over 400, and if you don't believe me, here's the picture to prove it. But it is not a bench seat, it's going to be bucket seats but they are very forgiving bucket seats. They're very wide, and that's not gonna be your biggest issue with this thing. The biggest issue is gonna be these individual lap bars for each person that's gonna be in the cart. Now, you only have to get a couple clicks, but you have to have both knees inside the bars where the lap bar can come down, and that's where it's gonna be an issue. If you're bigger in the thigh or have trouble getting your knees together, this lap bar is a little on the narrow side, in my opinion, so it might give you a little bit of trouble. Um, as you saw from my picture, I was able to ride it, but it hurt quite a bit. And when we went back this year, and I was about 320 pounds, it still hurt a little bit. I was able to fit in much better, it didn't hurt as much. But, yeah, you're going to have to, if you're a bigger person, it's probably going to be a little snug on you. But I'm going to say, probably right around the 400 mark, maybe up to 425 is going to be your cutoff on this one. As you exit down away from Seven Doors Mine Train, you will see the entrance to the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh is another indoor dark ride. And as you'll see from the pictures here, it is another bench seat that has a single lap bar to pull down for everybody in a single row. Now, if you're gonna be riding by yourself, you're probably gonna have a little bit more room. And if you're riding with someone else, then it might be a little bit more of an issue because you have to have, again, your knees uh, inside the lap bar and inside the wall. So if you're sitting next to the wall, it's gonna be a little snugger than if you're on the outside. And it's also a little bit roomier in the front. So if you're a bigger person and you're worried about that, try for the front row, ask the cast member, they'll be happy to help you with that. Now, I didn't have an issue with it. I didn't ride it when I was 400. I rode it at 320 was the first time I rode this ride. And it wasn't an issue for me, but the issue that I could see coming up is that it doesn't have a lot of leg and foot room in this thing. So if you're having to pull your legs up into yourself, that's obviously going to push your gut up and forward, which may cause the bar not to be able to come down as far. Now, I don't think there's going to be that much of a weight restriction or an issue on this. Just be aware that could be a problem. But I'm going to say up to 425, you're probably going to be safe again on these bench sheets with a single lap bar. After we leave Winnie the Pooh, we are going to double back 
go through these castle turrets and over here to Prince Charming Regal Carousel. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time here on the Regal Carousel because it's just a carousel. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. Well, that's not fair. It's Disney, so it's always special when it's at Disney, right? Anyway, like all other carousels, it's gonna have your up and down horses and you're gonna have to be able to climb up on one of these things if you're going to ride the horse, obviously. And you, if you see from the picture here, it has a little brown belt that has to go around your waist and lock you into place to be able to ride safely. Now it's built for children, so if you're a bigger person, that brown belt is probably not gonna go around you. But lucky for you, you can stand beside your child, they're just fine with that. Or, there's this bad boy here. You can sit on the bench seat and go for a ride around the carousel and watch the horses go up and down. So there's not really going to be a weight issue, as long as riding in the sled is not an issue for you. Leaving the carousel, you are going to pass Mickey's Feel Her Magic, which is just another show, but I recommend not passing this up. It's a fun show. Now, as we continue past the Feel Her Magic, we are going to come to Peter Pan's Flight on the left. Peter Pan's Flight is another indoor dark ride attraction. And like the majority of these rides you're going to see at Disney World, it again is a bench seat. And you're going to have the single lap bar that's going to come down on you and whatever guest, if there's a guest, that's going to be riding with you. Now the, the fit on this is going to be almost identical to the Under the Sea with the Little Mermaid ride. So if you can fit on that, you can fit on this and vice versa. Now the cars don't stop, so the biggest issue is if you have the mobility to get on this thing while it's moving. And it goes pretty slow, so it's, that's not really an issue. But as long as you can get on this thing and step on and off, you're not going to have a problem. It's a bench seat, that single bar barely has to come down, just a click or two, and you're good to go. So as long as you're going to fit in this seat, which as you can see is pretty forgiving, you can ride. And there's not really going to be a weight restriction. And just outside of Peter Pan's flight is the entrance to It's a Small World. Oh, the iconic It's a Small World ride. You can't go to Disney without riding this, right? Well, <laughs> you can, but you're probably going to anyway, right? But as you can see, it's just a standard boat ride, like Disney has a lot of these things. And the seating on this is just a bench. There are no restraints. The biggest issue is going to be, can you step in and out of the boat? If you can do that, you can ride. There's not really going to be a weight restriction on this. Now, there's not really a whole lot of leg room on this, so if you have trouble pulling your knees up, which is going to cause your gut to raise up, obviously, if you're big, you're familiar with that. You know what I'm talking about. You may have to sit a little, little sideways, but you can still ride. It's not a problem. Now, I did that when I rode at just over 400 pounds. It was a little bit uncomfortable to have to sit a little bit sideways because of the lack of leg room and it, you know, pushing my knees up into my gut. But I was able to ride. I was able to have a good time. So keep that in mind when you're riding and just know that that could be an issue. But other than that, there shouldn't really be any weight restrictions and you should be good to go. As we leave It's a Small World, we're going to come down here past the Rapunzel Tower and just to the right of it is going to be the famous Haunted Mansion. Now I joked about the Small World ride, but you really can't go to Disney and not ride the Haunted Mansion, right? No, you really can't. If you go and don't ride the Haunted Mansion, something's wrong with you. <laughs> now, it's a great ride. And as you can see here, you're going to get into one of these bad boys, one of these doom buggies. And like most dark rides in Disney property, it is going to be your standard bench seat with the single lap bar to pull down over all occupants in the buggy. And like the others, there's not really going to be a weight restriction. But there is a moving sidewalk to get onto and off of the vehicle, so you're going to have to manage that. But if you can manage that and step into this thing, you should have no issues. That bar comes down, the seat's forgiving, and there shouldn't be any issues with size restrictions and weight on this. Up to 450 plus, you're going to have no problems. So go for a ride, have a good time, hope you get a little scared. As you exit the Haunted Mansion, you're going to come south through the Liberty Square area and continue down into Frontierland over here by the Country Bear Jamboree, you will see a little hidden entrance which will take you down to the Magic Carpets of Aladdin. The Magic Carpets of Aladdin is going to be very similar to the restraints we saw on Dumbo. You will see from the picture, again it's another bench seat, and there is a seat belt on this one that has to go over all occupants that are on that bench seat. I rode with my daughter on this, and we were able to get that seat belt around both of us, and I had a few inches to spare at just over 400 pounds. So if that doesn't work with you riding with someone, 
you can probably still ride by yourself and maybe fit into this up to 425, 450 and not have an issue. It's a fun little ride. So hop in, have a good time, and watch out for the camels. They spit. And just outside the magic carpets of Aladdin, you will go down a little set of stairs where you will approach the famous Jungle Cruise. The Jungle Cruise is another iconic ride at Magic Kingdom. And let's be honest, there's not many here that aren't. And as you can see from the pictures here, it's another boat ride, which at Disney World, there are a lot of these as well. But on this one, it's a little bit different than the other ones you've been on. It is gonna be bench seats again, but they're gonna go around the side of this thing. There are not gonna be any restraints. And so with that being a bench seat and no restraints, there's also not really gonna be any weight restrictions. The only issue you're gonna have on this is are you able to get into and out of the boat? If you can do that, you're not gonna have a problem. You can ride and have a good time. After you exit the Jungle Cruise, you will go back up the stairs, take a left past the Enchanted Tiki Room, and you will approach the entrance to Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean, as if you couldn't have guessed, is another boat ride, and believe it or not, guess what? It's another bench seat. Disney World is very plus friendly, and they got a lot of this going on, just so guests of all shapes and sizes can enjoy and Pirates is gonna be no different. As you can see from the pictures here, the front seat's gonna give you a little bit more room, but you're not really gonna need it. Again, like I said, it's a bench seat. There's no other restraints. As long as you can step into and out of the boat, you're not gonna have an issue. Uh, like the Small World, if you're sitting in one of these center rows, there's not a whole lot of leg space, so you might have to turn your knees a little sideways to keep from having to pull up and push them into your gut. But if you're willing to do that, you can sit anywhere in this boat and not have a problem. And if that's an issue for you, again, ask to sit on the front seat. The cast member will be happy to help you with that. So any size, any weight, as long as you can get in and out of the boat, you should be able to ride and have a good time. After you leave Pirates, you're going to continue north around the corner here, past the Pecos Bill Tall Tail Inn and Cafe, and continue up to the Briar Patch, which is home to the legendary Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain is another iconic boat ride here at Magic Kingdom. But unlike some of the others, there's a little bit of a water coaster element in this one. So it's going to be a little bit more restrained than some of their typical bench seats you've been having so far. Now again with this one, as you will see here in the pictures, it is another bench seat for anyone sitting in the same row. But there is going to be a lap bar as well. If you can see up under these little cushiony areas just a little bit, you will see a black bar that has these little tan metal bars on the outside that's going to pull down over everyone in your row. Now just keep in mind that the bar is only going to pull down as far as the biggest person in the row, so if you're sitting with someone very small, you might want to keep that in mind. But that being said, you're not really going to go anywhere. There's not really that much of a drop or an extreme element to this where anyone's going to fly out of this. That's not going to be a problem. But just keep that in mind that the extremely small sitting with the extremely big might be a little bit of an issue and there might be some shifting around. Um, so make sure all your guests are comfortable with that. That being said, again, I rode this at a little over 400 pounds. I was able to get into it just fine. It fit. I was able to get the bar down. It was a little tight. It was a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, and I rode it again this year at about 320, and it felt just fine. So, and in case you don't believe me, here's a picture of me riding it at just over 400 pounds, having a good time. But again, it was a little snug, a little uncomfortable, so just keep that in mind. But up to 425, maybe a little bit more, you're going to be safe and good to go on this one. And just up from Splash Mountain is the last ride we're going to cover today in this video, and it's going to be Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Big Thunder Mountain is a train roller coaster that's going to go through these mountainous areas here. As you come into the station through the ride queue, you're going to get on this train here and get into one of these bad boys. As you can see, yep, you guessed it, it's another bench seat with a pull down bar. Now that bar is going to come down just as far as the biggest person in your row, so keep that in mind if you're traveling with somebody smaller. I rode this with my daughter, with my son, at 400 pounds and then at 320. And I just slapped my arm around them and we were just fine. It is a little bit of a um, more thrilling ride than some of the others in the park. So keep that in mind. But again, there shouldn't be that big of an issue. As long as you can get in and out of this thing, you can see the bench seat. It's very forgiving. You do have to get your knees under the bar there, which can be a little bit uncomfortable, but you can fit. If you're willing to do that, you can have a good time. Enjoy yourself on Big Thunder. 
and again up to 425 and because it's a bench seat maybe up to 450 if you're riding by yourself you can probably get into this thing if you're able to get in and out of the vehicle so just keep that in mind and hope it helps go have a good time on big thunder and just so you know after you exit big thunder mountain railroad you can head over here to the right and here is the last entrance to the walt disney world railroad and you can take that all the way around to the front of the park if you'd like and it would make you for a quick exit where you don't have to walk so far i really hope that everyone watching enjoyed the video and hopefully you got some helpful information out of this now i'm going to do something here that i don't usually do i'm going to beg and ask for likes subscribes and comments because this is a new video format for me and i need to know if you like it there were a lot of editing hours that went into making this and I know it doesn't look like much now but I've only been editing video for about nine months now so I'm still learning and it will get better but what I want you to do is in the comments tell me what you like tell me what you don't like tell me if you'd be interested in seeing any more of these videos because I have about six or seven other parks that I'm familiar enough with that I can make more videos like this where I can walk you around the park and tell you exactly what I think the weight limit's gonna be for each of the rides in the park. So please let me know what you think. Um, I'd be happy to hear any, any comments, any constructive criticism. Um, keep it clean, people. <laughs> um, be constructive, you know, be nice. There's kids that watch some of these videos. My kids watch the videos, so yeah, keep that in mind. Again, thank you for watching. If you made it this far, you're a trooper. Uh, I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you so much. And hopefully I'll see you next time with another one of these or with some other kind of video because I'm not going to stop making videos. But um, depending on what you like might determine what kind of videos I make. So let me know what you think. Yeah. Have a good one. I'll see you next time. High five.